Greetings, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I have drifted into the underworld. The Star Wars underworld. I have a bad feeling about this. Here we go. We must go to the lower levels. The underworld. You've taken your first step into a larger world. You're after something. Ben. Since I've started the underworld, I've met so many great friends. Chris. I grew up in the 1990s, and mall packaging is nostalgic for me. Dominic. What I love most about Star Wars is that it's fun, and it's all-round good times. So, this is where the fun begins. May the Force be with us. This thing really moves! Woo! I like this! I can't believe you came all this way to see me. Why am I not in the intro? I gotta come up with a snappy line. What's up, Star Wars fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Star Wars Underworld podcast. We are your source for the latest breaking Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion each and every week. And this week on the show, our Bad Batch Season 3 discussion rolls on as we discuss the episode Juggernaut. Oh. Yes, that was that oh. that was in there, and I, I kept welcome. it in there because You're I welcome. liked it. Um, and we'll be breaking down the exciting new story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. Plus, we'll, of course, answer all of your amazing Ask the SWU questions, all that, and much more in this episode of the Star Wars Underworld Podcast. My name is Chris, and joining me, it's Mr. Dominic Jones. Hello, Chris. Hello, Ben. Hello, Hannah. Hello, everybody. Somehow. Vice Admiral Rampart returned. I, I'll tell Whoa. you, when we saw that opening to the Bad Batch season three trailer, if you'd given me a hundred guesses as to what was going on with that juggernaut chase, I definitely would not have come up with they are there to rescue Admiral Admiral Rampart. That would not have been on my bingo card, even if you expanded the bingo card massively. Uh, but I really like that it is that that's who they were after. I like that that's who they they were saving. It's nice that this this season still has some surprises left in it. And it's fun to bring back this character. I think Hannah you've been rightly pointing out that this guy was like the main villain for like a season and a half and then he just disappeared from the entire show, never to be seen again we thought. Then lo and behold, here he is this week and he looks like he's going to play a role in the final uh final few episodes. That's pretty exciting. I'm uh, really looking forward to getting to this episode. It's going to be a great show. Heck yes. Also joining us, it's Ben Hart, the Star Wars guy. How's it going, everybody? Yes, we have a juggernaut of an episode tonight. Um, you know, not only not only do we have a new episode of the Bad Batch, but um, for the third week in a row, we got a new Star Wars trailer, guys. So um, <laughs> Lucasfilm is just keeping us fed and keeping us busy. And there's so much happening. We're not going to like scratch the surface of what's going on. Like, it's crazy. And, like, and then people have the audacity to like, get get excited for like CinemaCon. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to get some big announcements guys at CinemaCon. I'm like, what have you, what, where have you been? There's been that big <laughs> announcements every day for the last month. Like, come on, it's time to chill out. <laughs> CinemaCon is happening? Right now. Yeah, they just had the Disney, they just had the Disney uh, huh. presentation at CinemaCon and there was no mention of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> they got it all out of Bye. the way. Uh, they needed space for other I mean, things, I guess. To, I mean, to be fair, uh, none of uh, the Acolyte, um, Tales of the Empire, or Star Wars Outlaws, none of those things are going to be in cinemas. So it makes sense that they wouldn't be at CinemaCon. That's true. It'd be like going to E3 back in the day and being like, boy, I sure hope they show a trailer for The Force Awakens here. There was a giant <laughs> photo of uh, Din Djarin and Din Grogu next to Deadpool, which was kind of cool. Wow. Sure. Like, they can have the same photo? Or like literally <laughs> standing next to each other. You have to it's on our Twitter. You have to look it up. Oh, then we'll oh, stay away from the Twitter family. They're buddies right. now. It's, it's official. They're buddies. Oh, ben, I, I'm looking on threads and I'm not seeing it. What's going on here? Wait, oh, it's there. Believe me, it's there. Just look harder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Or maybe I maybe I missed that one. I don't know. I've got I'm posting on like eight seconds. Never mind. Oh my gosh. Also joining us, it is Hannah from the race side. G'day there. Great to be back for another week of uh, banter, roasts, and everything in between. So cannot wait to get into today's uh, juicy, juicy um, 
news. You sound like a sick of teeth into it. No, no, no thought no. went into that intro right there. That no, was none. I it out as she, as like, yes. words were leaving her brain mm -hmm. and her mouth at the same time right there. Oh yeah, you saw that in real time. We <laughs> got some juicy news and some hot goss. Let's go. Yeah, hot <laughs> goss. But get going here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> and also joining us, if you thought one Australian was enough, we have a good friend of the show, Catherine Dean. Hello there. Yes, more Australians, the better. Yes. <laughs> We are slowly I think, taking I think we're, we're almost outnumbered here. I'm not sure how I feel <laughs> well, about this. Yeah, you are outnumbered currently by members of the of the British Commonwealth. So I was just about to say this is no longer true. this is no longer an American majority podcast. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know what? That's fine, actually. You thought throwing tea in the harbor was a good idea. Mm, we're here to tell you <laughs> not so much. Not on, pal. Not, not on. on. We, not we on, did it without a war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I see, I see. Um, before we before we dive too much into talking about Bad Bash, talking about Outlaws, talking about all that stuff, Catherine, this is the first time you've been on the show in a while. Uh, yeah. Take us through what you've thought of, of the Bad Batch season three so far. Uh, look, it's been really good. I was, you know, okay with season one, but season two really, you know, picked up for me. I got quite invested. But, yes, yeah, season three is taking it to that other level with, you know, more stories about the clones and, and what's happening with them and Hemlock. Oh, Hemlock is the best he is. He's been he's yeah. been like a, yeah. a stellar creepy villain. Uh you know, it's I'm looking forward to seeing him and uh Rampart potentially interact because that's like two very different villain energies and it could be could lead to some sparks, some fireworks here for it. Uh all right, Chris, let's plug some things and then like let's romantically uh, yeah romantically fireworks and spots <laughs> sure why not i i was thinking more just like they'd fight each other but you know what <laughs> uh, fair enough yeah that well, makes more sense the again. line between between lovers and fighters is very fine and uh you know yes. hey Blood why lines. not <laughs> why not all right the only thing that we're going to be plugging tonight is threads at the <laughs> swq on threads um i guess we can also remind you about our discord check it out links in the description we got game nights we've got watch parties we've got discussion throughout the week and uh, make sure that you subscribe if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app and on youtube if you're watching us on youtube where you can become a channel member and you can super chat with us and we already have some super chats flowing in so join in on the party we'll be getting to those later in the episode and make sure of course after you're finished watching this show you don't forget about all the other shows on the star wars Road podcast network the race side iron cannon tales from the on the galaxy tractor beam and more all right, let's get into things. Let's talk about the Bad Batch. We will start with the Bad Batch. We'll get to uh, Outlaws uh, in a little bit, but we'll start with the Bad Batch. We're, of course, talking about Season 3, Episode 12, Juggernaut, written by Ezra Nachman and directed by Stuart Lee. Uh, Stuart Lee, a real icon of uh, Star Wars animation direction. Uh, and we will start how we always do, go around the table, give some initial impressions. And Ben, I'm going to throw it to you first. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think it's safe to say that my taste, not just in Star Wars, but it's just in media in general, can I'm not saying it always is, but it can be very shallow. I I I am I'm a sucker for a dumb action movie. You give me a bunch of people shooting at each other or running away from each other or driving a big truck with big wheels <laughs> down a dirt road on a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones style and people falling off and stormtroopers like that's my jam and so that was kind of my first reaction to this episode is like this is absolutely my kind of Star Wars and I love it and it's amazing and just you know and and to go deeper on this episode just like I love the higher stakes I love that it feels like because I I will say if I had a criticism of season three so far is that I just felt like okay we started with some really great momentum, and then it felt like it dissipated a little bit. It felt like, you know, oh, okay, where are we going? Kind of middle of the season. We got some really great episodes, and we got some, you know, maybe in my opinion, so-so episodes that, you know, it was like, okay, what are we doing here? I think this episode just, like, cranks the attention back up. Just like, okay, we know exactly what we're doing. We know exactly what we want to do, 
And um, yeah, the tension's there, the stakes are real, the action is real. Um, and it's just, it, I think it was a wonderful, wonderful episode that I think illustrates like it, it's really got me hyped for like going into the scene. I'm like, I don't want this show to end. I really, I don't want it to end. But like, if it's going to end, I want it to end like this. All right. All right. Ben wants the show to end is what we took away from that. Ben wants the show to end. <laughs> yeah, that's like, um, taking out of context <laughs> like so quickly. Jeez. Um, Hannah, let's go to you next. What did you think overall of Juggernaut? Yeah, it was an interesting it was an interesting episode. I think I, I agree with you, Ben, to a degree of like uh, there's something just satisfying about big explosions, cool blasters on a tank just <laughs> smashing through something. There's a there's a very cool element to that. Um, and that goes back to a very core of Star Wars, just seeing, you know, a cool chase scene uh, is, is very, you know, fundamental to Star Wars action. So I really enjoyed that part. Um, I think I have some nitpicks about the pace and maybe positioning of this episode uh it it felt like it, we, we needed this kind of explanatory episode to kind of set up pieces of inf information going into the final episodes um i do think probably the one main thing i i'm just focusing on a lot this week with, with this episode is that it was just so short and mm. usually i don't really actually give a crap about the so like the length of the episode i'm like oh it's purposeful like it i doesn't matter if short long it's gonna fit but this one, I just so felt it actually lost a lot for me because it was so short. Like we kind of, because I can easily see where we maybe could have had a bit more of the story told. We could have a lot more kind of dialogue and things happen on Pabu at the start of the episode. Mm. I felt like there was other parts of the episode we could have spent more time on exploring. But it was only like 21, not even, it was like 19 and a half minutes of actual story that we got to see this week. So felt very short for me which really dampened things but i i had to be so negative because it was actually quite a fun episode and it was cool seeing rampart but yeah i think we'll we'll get into the length of it a little later but it was it was fun it was a fun mm. one uh catherine your thoughts on this one yeah fun uh great seeing the juggernauts and yeah big explosions smashy smashy uh <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just need that um but yeah i i feel it's okay now what's next what's the next thing it, it did feel you know people use the word filler that's not right but it does feel like it, it's a stepping stone mm -hmm. to the next thing um you know not so much its own little contained story but yeah stepping stone to then the next story because when i was re-watching it last night it was that oh yeah extended okay what what's next now what yeah 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 it, it has a little bit of i'll get into this more in a minute but like it has a, a bit of the the season they've done this a couple of times this season where they're like it feels like there's been a really intense episode and they need a palate cleanser and that that's sort of what this episode was uh chris your thoughts on juggernaut yeah, I mean, I really echo a uh, echo a lot of what Catherine and, and Hannah have have said. Heckle, like heckle us, heckle. Chris. Yeah, I don't even know Ooh. what I said the first time. I knew I just knew it wasn't right. <laughs> I just knew it wasn't right. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I I agree. You know, those were my thoughts on the episode. Is that it, it was fun? It was entertaining. I it, it was good that it was so short because I think it would have gotten a little old if it was of that level for longer but then also with the extra time they could have made it better as mm. y'all kind of have alluded to as well so i don't know like i thought it was kind of interesting that they chose to have the the b plot of the episode be so small and there not be a lot of screen time for the stuff that was going on on tantus because i thought the stuff with 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 hemlock and and omega um and emery were very I thought that was very interesting. And I, I was kind of shocked that we, there was like a whole good 10, 15 minutes in the middle where we didn't even see them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so again, not to take away from the really great action sequence that we got again, visually, it was very appealing as, as, as Ben mentioned. Um, anytime you have a, a thing rolling on the side of a cliff, of course it's, it's entertaining, but <laughs> I think at the level of writing that the show has gotten, um, I definitely think that if I was writing this episode myself, I would have I would have added another few minutes of of Tantus stuff interspersed to really, really uh, 
get some more revelation and more character based mm. stuff into the episode because it was very unbalanced towards the the action side which again yeah. was not the action itself was was good yeah. and i'm not saying it's bad and i enjoyed the 20 minutes yeah, I, I, I did see of it yeah, I don't think anybody was bored by this episode. Not I think bored. is what we're getting at. Yeah, like everybody was entertained. So on that base level, success. But with a show like this, maybe you're thinking there could have been more. Uh, yeah, this is. I think this is the third sort of episode like this this season where you've come off a really something really heavy, something really big, and you need something that's a you get something that's a little bit more fun, a little bit more lighthearted. Um, you know, I think about there's the fourth episode of the season, a different approach. You've just been through that three part introduction to the season of Omega and, and Crosshair escaping. Tantus, the Emperor is involved. Uh, you have Hunter and, and and Wrecker searching the galaxy for them. And you, you've been through all of that intensity. And then you get an episode where um, Omega and Crosshair are gambling with Imperial credits to try and escape. And it's sort of fun. And it ends with like an all the animals escape from prison kind of sequence uh and then you know you go you have those episodes with rex on um what's that planet called the one from the clone wars movie teth and you know things get pretty dark in there things get pretty hectic and so a week later what do you get you get uh hunter and and wrecker wrestling gators and nolans with um uh, ming na right like you get yeah. like an adventure like that and then you know we just came off of this a, you know, incredibly dark and incredibly intense and, and visceral episode in which Pabu is, is attacked. It's sieged. Omega decides to turn herself in. And so you get something a little bit more fun. You're, here's your reward to get some, some, some big rolly tanks shooting at each other as they drive alongside the cliff. So the season has had these sort of, um, you know, yeah, it's kind of like breather episodes I, I don't think they're filler they're not filler they don't they 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 aren't just there to fill time or fill a space in the schedule in the schedule they do move the stories forward even even in those sort of um you know more just sort of fun action for action sake sequences um but they you know they are they're they're serving a purpose that is just to let the season breathe um now sometimes you come out of an episode like last week, you want to get the season going again. You want to keep the story moving and maybe there's a way to do that with the juggernauts. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a way to include all this. Maybe that you just tack on an extra minute of story with, with Omega, or maybe you don't make the big reveal last week or two weeks ago about what is going on with, um, I nearly said project luminous, uh, project necromancer. Um, I think that to me, this episode makes me question why we needed that episode two weeks ago with the, or, or last week, one, part one of the two parter with Cad Bane. It makes me question why did we need, why did we have that reveal then of the kids in the cell? I think that reveal is so much more powerful at the end of this episode when it's Omega and Hemlock going in there compared to when Emery went in there uh, last week. I think that I think if that's what you end on and then you come back in a week later with some Cad Bane action, some cat, you know, finding out more about these kids, putting Emery in charge, then it, it does. It, 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 there's a little bit of structural oddness to me in the season there. But again, just to echo what everybody else has said, when the tanks went pew, pew, vroom, vroom, I was like, we take me along <laughs> for this ride. I'm here for this. <laughs> Let's get this in that galaxy's edge. Come on. Um, let's let's start with the Omega storyline. That is sort of the overarching story of, of this series. Um, Catherine, I'll, I'll go to you on this because you, you've mentioned Dr. Hemlock as a, as a villain. Um, what have you thought of, of his interactions with Omega? And what do you think of, of seeing these two characters back on screen together? Well, what I really liked is he's just truthful with her. Like he is just saying... This is why we need you. This is what the project is. Um, you know, he's not lying to her or deceiving her or, yeah, it's, he's really speaking to her honestly and openly. And, yes, they're going to be doing experiments and lock her up, but he's not moustache twirling villain talking to her. He's not talking cruelly. I wouldn't say he's talking kindly, but he's still just saying to Omega, this is why we needed you. This is what we can do. It's 
it's kind of amazing that yet yeah, he's truthful to her. Mm-hmm. That's and that's something that something Star Wars has always played with with its villains. The best Star Wars villains are the ones that tell the truth. Yeah, and it's the heroes that are lying to each other. You know, uh, the good man who was your father was destroyed. Yeah, okay, okay, Obi Wan. Sure, he's kind of, sort of, from a certain point of view, if you want to put it that way. But you know, Count Dooku's the one saying, "Hey, you know, there's a Sith Lord in charge of everything," and Obi Wan's like, "That's not possible." Vader's like, "Hey, uh, I'm your father." Looks like, "No, that's not true." They, they're they're the one telling the hard truths. Um, I I will never one of the one of the things that bothers me about the Rise of Skywalker is that they undid that with Kylo. He's telling Rey the truth, the hard truth about her parents. They're nobody. They don't matter. Uh, in the Last Jedi, and that's such a Star Warsy thing. And then the subsequent movie sort of mucks around with that but that's a topic for another day hemlock fits in with what dooku and and vader and and the good star wars villains do which is now i'm just i'm gonna level with you this is what we're doing this is what's going on you can either get on board or uh get out of our way be destroyed or or be made to come along i guess in the case of omega whereas the heroes try and like couch it and stuff and make it easier for each other when sometimes the truth is what you need Truth will set you free, you might even say. Yes. Their their relationship reminds me of the relationship um between Eleven and Papa and Stranger Things. Mm. Um there's there's yeah. uh, when I was watching that, I'm like, oh, these scenes remind me a little bit of of these Stranger Things um scenes with with that character. Um and uh yeah, I think it it, it was interesting because it, I guess the the good thing that we got is we got just the very clear statement of like what this M camp business is all about. Like we've gotten hints mm-hmm. of it. We've got mentions of it now uh, officially from Hemlock's mouth. We have it, it, it summarized so that there can be no more speculation about it. Like it just has to do with the ability to, to replicate the, the M counts amounts and the susceptibility to force ability or, or whatever. Um, so that's cool. But I mean, other than that though, it was very much this part of the story was a was a setup for the future of of the story. So we didn't get a lot of forward movement on the situation. We just see, you know, Omega arrive and then she learns about the other kids that are there and then she gets that direct information about about what the M count business is all really about. So yeah, I think perhaps maybe one of the reasons why we didn't get more of this very, very um, good and interesting segment of, of of the story is that it just perhaps tonally it needs to be later in the season. It needs to be next week or the week after. So, you know, we, we kind of were stuck with only a certain amount in this episode because they could only move so far. So I kind of get that. Um, and I guess it's better that we got something and not nothing, but, mm-hmm. um, it is, it's still, it's still interesting. It's still interesting how, how they sprinkled in this, just this little, little taste of what is going to become, I think a lot more interesting story of, of what happens to Omega at Tantus. Mm-hmm. It's definitely baby steps forward. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's a lot of like, it's either like going over ground that we as the audience already know or confirming stuff that that we as the audience have have suspected or been told but have kind of wondered and doubted like you know that omega's blood is the the only one that can replicate an m count we kind of we kind of knew that we kind of knew that and nala say kind of tried to throw some cold water on that uh earlier in the season but you know, that always seemed to, uh, a, like a dubious statement from her. Um, and then, of course, like I said, we basically get the same beat again for Omega that we got with um, Emery the previous week with the reveal of, of the kids there at the end. And I feel like it's more powerful with Omega because she is also a kid. She's also a child. Like she's realizing, you know, she's not just trying to liberate. Uh, her clone brothers, but she's also trying to liberate other kids. And that's been something that has been kind of a a background thread through the Bad Batch, has been Omega interacting with other kids, going all the way back to her with Cut Laquane's kids um, in season one, uh, her friendship with um, the the kid who's um, the, the the king of Pabu's daughter. You know, like there's, there's these... Right. 
there's these things there's there's this has been there kind of in the background going on uh and it is kind of does sort of seem to be leading somewhere now of, of omega not just feeling for the clones as a fellow clone but feeling for her fellow children that this is the galaxy that they're going to inherit and this is the galaxy that they're, that they're forced to grow up in and live in uh ben what, what did you think of of all this yeah so i you know i do i like that i like the uh, i like the weird like father daughter relationship that hemlock i think chris put it beautifully like it is kind of like stranger things a little bit um and and you're right of just like this whole thing of you know protagonists heroes are often full of doubt and mm -hmm. and unsure of themselves and they have to make up for that sometimes by not being truthful with themselves with people around them whereas villains are confident they know exactly what they're doing and they're they're full of themselves and they just they 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 tell the truth because that's they're confident and so i like that hemlock he doesn't he isn't like like catherine said like he's not this mustache whirling villain he is this guy who is absolutely a bad guy okay he's, he's not just because he isn't a mustache whirling villain doesn't make him a, a villain he absolutely is he is the worst he is so bad he is he's so bad but like ultimately he does come at this of just like this very cold, calculated, and not this disdainful thing. He's just like, hey, this is how it is. You know, he's just telling her, you know, this is your new home, and this is devastating. And the only thing I will say in contrast to your point about the, which I, I kind of understand the whole idea of like, well, why didn't we get this in this episode? That would have been more impactful. But it is impactful because we had that other episode, because we had this entire 22 minute of just like setting this up and saying like the plight of these kids we when we he opens the door we know the whole story already we know all these kids we know one of them tried to break out they've been here for months maybe years and we know there's probably another kid in there we haven't seen it's the far from and so like i think it does work in that sense i'm just like this is we already know the stakes and now we're just going to be going forward with this. And, you know, I think ultimately, I think, you know, Omega's mission is going to be, I think Omega is realizing the mission is not just about her brothers. It's so much bigger. The stakes have now never been higher that even as bad as they were, Omega is now realizing they're way, way worse. Mm. Hannah, do you want to add anything? Uh, I agree. I agree with everything here. I think um, some of the best storytelling of is, you know, that of the reality and people thinking one thing, hoping for one thing and wanting a better life and then it's it's another and that's because of the empire. So, no, yeah, I have literally nothing else to add. I agree with everything. Fantastic. Glad we're all in agreement. Um, <laughs> also, I just want to say I love Star Wars alien names because I'm 95% sure Ben just made one up there. Um, but I, uh, <laughs> it, 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 start, it starts with an F and far uh, something. I don't know. I, I love I it. I could get ben, away with that. Apparently I can't. Ben's connection corner, everybody coming up later in the show. Um, can't let's, wait. <laughs> let's talk about, uh, you'll go from a, a non mustache twirling villain to a much more mustache twirling villain, or in this case, a full faced beard, uh, villain, the return of vice admiral rampart or is he just admiral rampart i don't know rampart's back somehow he, he, he he's returned. he's his name is bob rampart okay bob robert rampart. rampart robert rampart good good ah. that's canon robert rampart rampart refrigeration i i no uh, i think he does have a he does have a name and it came out with this episode oh my god wait, hang on wait really Ed, uh edmund E D M O N. oh my edmund. god edmund. <laughs> Hang out literally that's amazing <laughs> wow yeah Boy, those good Star old Wars names. Edmund. <laughs> good old Edmund. Well, Hannah, what would you think of, of the return of, of Edmund Rampart, apparently? Well, 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 well. Let me tell you, this is one of my proudest moments of uh, being online with Star Wars fans and talking because every week at the Bad Batch, uh, I do these pre-shows. I just realized my red light has gone out. Why did the oh, no. red light go out? Oh, no, sorry, continue. Um, the, I do a pre-show every week uh, We I, with a live chat, and we talk about what could possibly happen in the episode, what's going to go down. 
I can't remember who specifically said it, but there came a point in the live show that we were going, well, how do they get to Tantus? How does the Bad Batch, how does Hunter Crosshair Wrecker get to Tantus without knowing where it is? And me and my live chat came to the conclusion the only person that would know where Tantus is that may be able to give that, them that information is Admiral Rampart. And so mm. we actually, for 20 minutes, called the entire episode, <laughs> which happened, being like, yeah, so that he'll be in prison, so they got to go find him in prison. They'll probably break him out, and then they'll probably ask him where's Tantus, and that'll be the episode. And then that happened. So uh, I, I'm i stoked because I was me and the live chat called it and figured it out. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it makes sense. I think it was logical. Um, and yeah, for weeks I've been like, how has this, like, main villain turned to dust in the story? But it makes sense now, I think. Yeah, they were, they were keeping him. Obviously, the, the focus isn't on him anymore, but that's almost his story, you know, the way he's been cast aside. And there's a lot to delve into that with, you know, how the Emperor uh, treats his, you know, the people that, that work for him. And someone brought up in a, a good comment saying that, you know, you would think the Emperor would try and revere the people that work for him really well because, if you know, a Rampart was a really good worker for the Empire. He did he did everything very well. Um, but I think that furthers this that that narrative of how ruthless and just cold and emotionless Palpatine is, and every single minuscule thing is for his gain. Is that even though Rampart was so good, you know, Rampart's character when the whole Camino thing came out, it you know. It jeopardized Palpatine for a split second, but all he had to do was snuff out Rampart and go, oh, it was his fault. He's the bad guy. We're going to lock him up. And then everyone cheers for Palpatine. And I think that just furthers his evil, you know, character, character development. Yeah, character arc, essentially. Uh, and I think the fact that we haven't had a mention or a s seen Rampart for so long has just shown that that is just cast aside he was top dog a grand admiral a freaking grand admiral wait was he a grand i thought he was a vice yeah admiral. vice admiral vice my apologies my vice uh vice there you go um vice admiral and then cast aside i think it's a uh a, a sad but kind of right uh story i mean he freaking destroyed camino come on yeah. it's like a saddest scene in star wars too <laughs> but yeah and it's cool i like seeing him Another like sort of potential ally that is very much not a good guy. Very much. Right? Yeah. He's he's in it sort of for for number 1. He's in it for himself. And the question is, you know, what's his angle? Does he even have an angle at this point? What mm. what could the bad batch offer him? What could these clones say, "Hey, former vice admiral, um <laughs> get get on our side is it pure petty revenge fair enough feels it feels in character with rampart but maybe he's after something more maybe he wants uh wants something else uh catherine what do you think of uh bringing back uh, admiral rampart this late in the game it's always good to bring back characters that you've established that are there rather than you know a whole new person you know that they might happen to abduct or figure out but yeah know that ramparts there that they can grab um but yeah it's also interesting because of that backstory with him and crosshair it, it's adding layers to that interaction but yeah he's there's he was in there for something and you've got to go for pettiness pettiness <laughs> is is always a very good motivator I love it. Spite. Yeah. yeah. I don't Good old I, spite. I don't want you to win. I just need Kylo Ren to lose. I don't need you to win. I just need the Emperor to lose. Bring it on. I love it. I, I think that could be good. Ben, Chris, any uh, any thoughts on on the return of uh our former top adversary on the Bad Batch? Uh he he has a really nice beard. <laughs> That's my I, thoughts. I wish, I wish I could do that for real. I, um, I I'm going to grow my noun and donate it, to Ben. <laughs> yeah, one of these days. I, I need it. <laughs> Clearly, I need it. Um, uh, the only thing I have to say about Rampart is I was surprised at how excited I was mm. to see him because my overall, I think one of my 
my biggest Bad Batch hot takes is I, I thought Rampart, I just, I've never liked Rampart. I thought he was mm. super boring and just dumb. And I was like, I was the one cheering, yes, when they were taking him away in the Senate. I'm just like, yes, finally got rid of him. And he got it replaced by Hamlock, who's so good. I'm like, oh, this show is getting better and better. They're getting rid of the boring villain and, and replacing him with a really, really cool villain. But then you get here, I'm just like, this is perfect. This is a brilliant way to bring him back. And I also just love the fact that this is not, this is the umpteenth Star Wars prison break we've gotten. Um, <laughs> considering literally the first movie of Star Wars has a prison break in it. Um, you know, like we always assume that like all the prisoners in an Imperial facility are like bad, are, are like, are like good people. Like they, they got locked up by the empire for, for bad reasons. Whereas Rampart's the one he deserves to be in there. Okay. <laughs> he absolutely, <laughs> he's done so many bad things. He, he shot that poor clone in the face that one time he destroyed Topeka city, you know, just so many terrible things like Rampart deserves to rot in prison. Um, deserves to, to all the horrible things that might happen to him. Um, but I also like that, like he has a score to settle and, and just the shows the, the hubris of the empire, the fact that they really, they often, shoot themselves in the foot, perhaps quite literally sometimes, um, in regards to like screwing people over and just thinking like, oh, you know, they'll just they'll cower in fear. And yes, like, no, Rampart has a score to settle. He's like he's been betrayed personally by the Emperor. And now he's gonna screw over Palpatine by giving away Tantus base. Like that's literally what's gonna happen. And Palpatine has no one to blame but himself. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all Palpy's fault. All Shivi's fault. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the chase sequence. Um, I don't know about you, but you all, but uh, I found it uh, rather reminiscent in a good way of uh, the season two Mandalorian episode with the uh, Migs Mayfeld with Bill Burr. Yep. Had had a lot yep. of that energy going <laughs> on. Uh, definitely some Rogue One energy to it yep. as well. Um, but also like without feeling like a complete retread of those things too. It felt like it was its own spin, its own take on it. On a Tread, spin. Yeah, retread. It's almost oh, like we're looking at photos of wheels right now. I didn't, I didn't, uh, did not. <laughs> oh, sure. You didn't that see one. that one coming. <laughs> I didn't sure. mean to do that one. <laughs> didn't mean to do that, no. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> yeah. It was a good fun sequence. It was good to see the Bad Batch in action. And again, like I said, off the hop, like, that's that sequence in the trailer. A hundred guesses for a hundred bucks to get it right. Never would have gone with their rescuing Vice Admiral Rampart. Yeah, it's funny. And they also, what was it? Uh, it was a couple, it was a day or two before this episode came out. They released a clip and it was this scene. It was the part of the scene. It was a kind of extended clip of what we saw in the trailer. And it, it, it starts right as Crosshair just throws Rampart on the ground and walks onto the bridge. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, who is Crosshair carrying? And I'm just like, oh boy, here we go. And I think a few people said I said Rampart. And that's when I started hearing the Rampart discussion. I was like, okay, all right. They may be going here this time. That was funny. You were like typical fans coming up with their silly <laughs> theories. And <laughs> nope. Well, well, look, side tangent really quick, just to show how, how, how dumb I can be sometimes. Um, I remember <laughs> specifically um, watching the one of the early season five of Clone Wars, yeah. going back way back far of trying to figure out who bombed the Jedi Temple. Ahsoka is uh, is uh, interviewing the, the lady in the Jedi Temple. And then there's someone passes out in the side. It's Barris walks by out and looks into the building, looks into the, the room and just keeps on going. And people are on online going like it's Barris. She looked, she made looked and I'm just like, you're you're crazy. There's no way it's Barris. And then <laughs> I that, the like, rest is history. Like that 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 one like that, I don't even think that's an intentional like hint. I think that was just they the, the if that was in the background. Like that's no that one I, is, I don't I, I don't can't buy believe. It. I don't I mean, buy that's it. like that's, that's like you funny. got it right once and, and, and now we're now we have to watch the background of every one of these trailers for somebody who looks looks at the camera kind of funny. Um I also am not fully convinced there wasn't some trickery in the uh, the trailer, like that they removed Crosshair from some of these scenes. I mm. feel like I feel like there's some shots mm. in the trailer that in the episode Crosshair is there, but in the trailer he's not, and it was like we'll hide the Crosshair layer. Yeah. No, don't just what what 
what on earth are you saying right now? I'm saying they digitally <laughs> are you, are removed. Are you going to correct him or shall I, Hannah? I'm saying they digitally <laughs> removed Crosshair from some shots. I mean, if they can remove no, Gene no. Guy from Mandalorian. <laughs> no, what? They just showed the shots that only, like, Wrecker and Hunter there's, were there's in, like, least, the driver's there's at seat. least one shot where there's all three of them are there in the trailer. There's just two of them. I, I, we I, have to. He's I'm still in the screen. I'm willing, to, be, I'm willing to be wrong on this, but I, I'm also not willing to be wrong on this. I, so. I'm not even taking I'm positive. I'm positive in, like, some Avengers or something, they digitally changed um, Thor to – you know, have two eyes and, and all of that to hide or what Ragnarok, had happened yeah. in Thor. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. To, to a non-Marvel person, that sounds really funny. I'm like, he has four <laughs> eyes at some point? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, I was lose mine. Because you lose an eye. An eye. He loses an eye. Look, shut up. Yeah, shut up. They, to... I had him with two eyes instead of just one eye and a patch. Show me the he proof. He has an eye that. patch. Thor has an eye patch. Look, I'll send anyway. you screenshots. I'll take. Look, it wasn't even me that <laughs> caught this. Okay, I'm. I'm not the look. Alex from Star Wars Explained. He's the one that was like, "Oh, crosshair." I'm like, "What?" So, um, <laughs> that's so good. There's some shots in the in in the cockpit. I'm I'm convinced, but I I could be proven wrong. I'll say, uh, you know, I'm willing to accept. You, you don't want to challenge me on something like this. I will spend the rest of the night screen capping bring the trailer it, and the episode. And bring, it, bring it, bring it, bring it for next week, Ben. Bring it for next week. Well, that that'll be Ben's connection corner. We'll just go through that. Don't <laughs> test me. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, Ben's connection corner, I'd like to briefly uh, bring up a a new segment that uh, I'm I'm in instituting on this show. Excuse me. It's called uh, Tech is a Live Watch. Oh, um, oh uh, never mind the fact that Tech is in the episode because he delivers Omega to Tantus. Um, <laughs> you have many shots. You have you have Fee in this episode talking about brown eyes, mm. talking about. Uh, you know, any uh, anyone that uh, he trusted, she would trust. And all through that scene, this is my turn to be a little a, a crazy person looking in the background. All through that scene, just over her shoulder are Tech's goggles looming out there like Tech himself alive, just waiting for the moment to come back. So I look forward to uh, we got what, what three weeks of this left, three, four weeks. Look forward to uh, sitting here and uh completing if, the if tech is alive watch when if he you don't get a reveal next week one way or the other i think i will lose it i think, <laughs> I, think I, I am just gonna freaking lose my mind over this because i'm like i thought like just tell us already you've been telegraphing this for eight episodes yep yep uh all right <laughs> speaking of ben's connection corner you know what time it is. It's time for your favorite segment. It's time for my favorite segment. It's time once again for Ben's Connection Corner. Connections in the corner with Ben. It's Ben's Connection Corner. Corner. Do, 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 do. How's it going, everybody? Ben's Connection Corner is filmed in front of a live studio audience. All right, Ben. What have you got for us this week? Well, I mean, I could go ad nauseum about like, hey, turbo tanks, you seen those before? Um, look, I'm not going to do that to you, okay? Um, I do, I do like the fact that Steve Bloom, who has I've not heard his voice a ton in the in the show, is suddenly like his voice is all over the place. If you don't know, Steve Bloom voiced Zeb and also literally every stormtrooper in Star Wars Rebels, <laughs> and a bunch in Rogue One, and a bunch in an, some other movies, I think. Um, I love that like we're quickly approaching the rebels timeline because they're like just throwing in Steve Bloom more and more. And he even voices the 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 captain, the the dude, the Imperial officer that's that's up in the bridge tower, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, good good to hear Steve Bloom back. Um I mean, I don't know. That's that's basically it. I mean, I'll 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 add I'll throw in I'll throw in a little uh anecdote here. Um, you know, the, the, the turbo tank itself is a cool design that I really like. And it, it, it literally obviously first appeared in Revenge of the Sith, but it goes all the way back to a original concept sketch for the Empire Strikes Back. Originally it was supposed to be in place of the AT-ATs, but they said, nah, we're not going to use wheels. We're going to use walkers. So it got trashed, but then George brought it back as he does. And, uh, so no, no, just another example of no good idea going to waste so now we had tons of turbo tanks and this, they've really been using like they were like 
I remember being shocked in Rogue One, being like, oh my God, Turbo Tank, this is great. And then we've got him a lot in a bunch of different projects. It's cool. Here we go. Um, Ben, I, I think, um, I just want to say, I think the, uh, starwars.com is trying to, uh, steal your thunder here. See, I don't look at starwars.com. Okay. Well, I don't want to cheat. Well, so if you go into the, uh, the gallery, the, the trivia gallery, which I don't, I, I, I'm going to no, no. say starwars.com really stretches the definition of the word trivia. Look, they have to have at least like three slides in there. If they don't have anything, they really gotta, they gotta They're really work. Like. It's like like one of the tr pieces of trivia is Vice Admiral Rampart is in this episode and he was a main villain for season one and two. It's like, has no, no, but did you not watch the show? Is that trivia? Um, I only started at three, so that yeah. makes sense to me. There you go. Um, but they say uh, the, the show's creative creative team uh, named the film the 1970s, uh, 1967 film Cool Hand Luke, starring Paul Newman as a convict in a prison camp as an influence on this episode. So there's a starwars.com okay. connection corner. I, I get it, I guess. Yeah. Um, also, was anybody else thinking that the Ugnot who was working with um <laughs> with um oh God, yes. with Rampart was the Ugnot that later works with Hondo? Uh literally, yes. Mel Mel Melchi. Yep. Mel disappointed he didn't say I'm name. spoken. <laughs> I was really, I was really uh, thinking that might be the same guy. All right. Well, thank you, Ben, for a, a rather uh brief but insightful edition of uh, i have of, one it, oh Pat, hannah has one oh it's not it's not we're not done yet <laughs> it's not it's good good done. all right hannah keep done. you going what, what's the connection <laughs> corner not, connection not, corner connection. Hannah. not even that good of a connection <laughs> but crosshair said the same line uh that iconic line he has from either i think it's season one uh where he goes how touching he says that to rampart Mm. And he oh. says that in season one, it's like one of his oh. iconic lines. Yeah, there we go. It's like the it's like the cavalry has arrived, but for Crosshair. <laughs> How touching. Okay, so um, next week I'm just not going to take any notes, and you all have to bring at least one connection. Okay, and I'm going <laughs> to judge them. Yes, because there was a really good connection the other week, but I didn't feel. Like I could bring it up the other week in the <laughs> campaign episode. So why uh, why is everyone so uptight about these connections? Just say them for crying out loud. I don't know. No, Help me out. Sometimes I struggle because, with this. Like it says right here on the screen, it's Ben's connection it's your, corner. It's your so corner. It's I don't want to you. get in your corner. Scratch my name make, out then. Make the connection. Everybody's connection corner. <laughs> everybody's connection corner. Connections in the corner with everybody. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Let's just. Well, maybe maybe that'll be the future of our favorite segment. Ben's Connection Corner. Connections in the corner with Ben. It's Ben's Connection Corner. corner. Do, 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 do. How's it going, everybody? Ben's Connection Corner is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Uh, someday that'll stop making me laugh. <laughs> but not this day. Yeah. <laughs> not today. Your last uh, day. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I'll the last thing I'll be on my deathbed will be Ben's Connection Corner. Do -do 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 -do. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> That'll be my deathbed. Um, final words. <laughs> All right. Um, any uh, any other thoughts on uh, on this episode? Uh, anybody wants to share, or shall we do final thoughts? That cavern under the mountain on Pablo. Can they put some motion detectors or something? <laughs> Just seal it up. Oh get like God. an invisible oh, yes. dog fence or something just to like <laughs> you know at the very least get your out of it <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i agree it's just an opening yeah uh, it's nice nice to see that uh az5 survived the the whole uh affair on on papu yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would have been sad if something happened we're anyway. going strong <laughs> i mean we didn't mention how fee mentioned brown eyes that was a really sweet moment of a, a little nod to their kind of relationship at at some point again uh, any friend of brown eyes is a friend of mine again tech is a live watch tech is a live in our watch. hearts in our hearts <laughs> uh all right let's go around the table one more time give some final thoughts and scores <coughs> out of 10 for this episode hannah start us off ah, final me <laughs> yeah you <laughs> okay <turn>. sure <laughs> uh, final thoughts and score out of 10 for a juggernaut yeah i i i think it's fun to just look at this episode as a simple, like, Clone Warsy, Rebelsy episode that's just a part of the season. 
bit of fun, bit of explosions. It's a good time. Um, I think the the critic in me is very like, oh, it's too short and it didn't do this, that, or the other. But I, I think overall, it, it's a, it's a good episode. There was nothing inherently bad within it uh, itself. Um, super fun. I just didn't peak my interest massively. So I'm going to give it a seven. I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. Seven out of 10 from Hannah. Uh, Chris, your, your thoughts, uh, your final thoughts to score out of 10 on this one. This was like the middle part of a three part arc. That's really good where the action sequence happens. It doesn't feel like a complete episode to me. Um, but writing it within itself, it's entertaining. So I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10 from Chris. Catherine, what about you? I forgot they'd be grading. Um, <laughs> you can use whatever scale you, you want. Yes, that is right. We do allow people to invite, invent their own scales on this show. I think Din at one point gave it seven bananas out of a cucumber. And I don't know. <laughs> Look, you know, I enjoyed it for what it is um yeah about 7.5 is what my gut feel is saying 7.5 from Catherine. ben final thought score out of 10 for juggernaut i can't believe i'm the only person that actually liked this episode it's weird feels weird um uh but uh yeah um i i like i said i really enjoyed this episode like it wasn't it, it is kind of a like i said a stepping stone episode it is kind of i mean that that end cliffhanger with rampart going like well we'll have to work together and then it's like that's maddening i'm just like next week now i need to see the next episode right now i need to know what happens um but really i think a great episode tons of great action um and you know finally um getting rampart back was it was icing on the cake for me i i, I give this on a 10 out of 10 I'm going for it. You're giving it a 10 out of 10, huh? Dang. Right. Look, I'm you're honest, saying, okay? Ben, you're saying Dang. this good. You're saying this episode is as good as Benny and the Communist? Oh, How better. dare you? Better. <laughs> what? Marx is <laughs> rolling in his grave. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, I, I I did really enjoy this one as well. I gave it a, a, a strong 8 out of 10. I thought the action sequences were terrific. Uh, the banter between Rampart and uh, Crosshair was really good. Um, you know, and, and, and again, anytime you get some turbo tanks uh, chasing each other down uh, and shooting at each other is pretty exciting uh, for me. Um, I think the issue is less with this episode itself and more th some of the structure of, of the season. I feel like you can take a lot of what this season has done and just reorder it a little bit. And I think you have a stronger whole. Um, again, I think the the Omega reveal of um, the kids in the vault. I think that's how you. I think that should have been the reveal of what was in the vault, and then you delve into more what that means in a, in a following episode. I think. Uh, I think if we'd spent more time with with uh, Emery and and Hemlock kind of in the background as kind of B and C plots through some of these episodes, I think. Uh, I think you you build up some of the some more of the tension of what's going on on Tantus. Um, and, uh, and and so again, it's it's not a problem with the episode per se. I just think that as we're building up to something really uh, fun and really exciting in the finale, I think you, it, some of these things, if you just change the order in which they appear, um, then I think you you take it from a, a strong eight to a strong nine or a strong 10 uh, even. So I, that's that's more my issue with it. Also, there was just like, one thing that like I'm stunned got past the script editor, the film editor, the director, the writer. There's this weird moment where they're like, where Crosshair's like, Vice Admiral Rampart is alive. He's in a prison prison camp. And then you cut to Rampart and the Ugnaught having like a back and forth. And then that scene is just over. And then the next time we see Rampart and the Ugnaught having a they're doing it the same thing basically where they're just kind of arguing with each other and it's like why did we need the first one of those and like that mm. is if you want to talk about filler that's what filler is it's just a scene for the sake of a scene um it it, it, it when you got everything you need from the subsequent scene you could have waited to the to do the rampart reveal a little bit later on um but that's a very minor thing in an otherwise Dom's filler very corner. Yeah. <laughs> filler in the corner with Dom. Filler in the corner with Dom. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah. So it's again, just a, a small thing in an otherwise uh, pretty stellar episode. Eight out of 10 from me. 
Uh, all right, there's a lot more to get to uh, this week, namely the uh, Star Wars Outlaws story trailer. Uh, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to duck out at this moment. Uh, I'm going to leave you all to discuss Outlaws. It is a video game. I don't have anything to say about it other than, <laughs> God, I wish they would just make this into a show. Make it into a show and then I'll care. Um, <laughs> Because it does, it. it looks it looks really cool, and I'm, I know all of you who play games are going to have a lot of fun with it. And I look forward to watching a super cut cut scenes mashup thingamajig on YouTube. Uh, but I'm going to duck out, so uh, I I will uh, I'll see everybody next week, and I will uh, I promise I promise you all um, uh, that uh, next week's show because I'm leaving early this week. Next for next week, I will have something very very cool, very very exciting. Uh, uh, in it, to to make up for this, either as part of next week's show or as like a you, bonus episode, you better sometime between now and then. Well, look, as long as as long as some things don't fall apart in the next twelve hours, I might have something very very cool for you. So, um, I'll leave you. I'll leave you with that, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. Bye, doll. Bye. 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 Just order wrap. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I thought he was going to say because he's going to miss an hour this week, he's going to be an hour early to next That's week. But I like, thought too. Do you think that? I was like, we can't commit to that. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that he's going to say great. we're going to get a three hour show. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> so good. <sighs> okay, where to next? Let's <laughs> get into it. <laughs> We've got an amazing Star trailer Wars to talk about. Star Wars Outlaws. Let's get into it. We um <laughs> well we are really lost when Dom's gone. <laughs> Jeez. It's fine. It's fine. Um we know what we're doing, right, guys? We know what we're doing. Um Star Wars Outlaws. I don't know why my camera is like that. I'm much closer now. I don't know why. I'm just gonna let go with it. I, I think that's um, why I'm throwing Star out Wars too. I'm like, outlaws. we all look so different now. Yeah, it's weird. Oh. Um, so we got a story trailer and a lot of actually a lot of really cool details about Star Wars Outlaws this week. That was very, very exciting. And again, they were like, Hey, you're getting a trailer this date and time. And it's great to actually like Helpful. plan your life Ooh. around a Star Wars trailer. You should be like, it's coming out at this time, set an alarm, wake up Star Wars. It's great. Um, and this was a great trailer. I'm look, I'm, I'm also in the Dom camp of just like, I, I I don't have a system to play this on. I really don't. I'm not planning on getting a system to play this on anytime soon. I am really looking forward to um, watching some gameplay and we got a lot of gameplay and just the overall thing. For those who don't know, this is a game that's set between uh, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. And it's, you know, it's dealing with a lot of that. I think it's pretty much apparent when you see K Vess come up to uh, the carbonite slab of Han Solo in this trailer. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of other stuff. There's underworld. There's Canto bite in the trailer. Um, they, it wasn't in the trailer, but they confirmed that Kira is back. Um, not played by Amy Lee Clark, but um, still we got Kira back, which is pretty cool. Crimson Dawn's in this. The huts are in this. Jabba's in this. Um, I don't know. Does anyone want to go first? That um, what, what what do we think of this trailer? It, it looks it looks really incredible. Um, I definitely am gonna get the game. I I I might do one of those things where you know how you like buy a book and then you don't finish it and then you buy another book and then you don't finish it and then you buy another. Book. I might do that because I don't know if I will have finished um jedi survivor by the time that this comes out at the rate that i'm going which is not very fast but i will get this even if i have not finished jedi survivor i will just move on to another game and start that and just bounce between the two because it does it does look really really amazing i feel like we're definitely getting into like another golden age of star wars games like i feel mm -hmm. like there were some dark there were definitely some dark ages for a while like there was a while where there really wasn't a whole lot coming out and there was a lot of movement about licensing and who was doing what and there were so many projects that that didn't that 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 weren't completed like star wars 1313 um and now now we have now they're starting to like the really good like a plus games are starting to come out like you know we've got the two installments in the jedi series now we've got star wars outlaws we've got more coming down the pipe um this is this is really fantastic so yeah i'm it looks amazing i'm excited for it i'm excited for something in an era that we don't really have anything outside of you know pieces of battlefront perhaps and um and and gaming uh, uh yeah looks looks amazing and uh yeah very excited for this yeah um yeah, yeah it looks great hannah 
please. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the look of it is really interesting and the time period in which it's set in is super fascinating to be in between Empire Return. Very interesting time. And I think, um, you know, bounty hunters are, are something that's like, a, it's a big part of Star Wars. And for, for Star Wars fans, they're really interesting. There's a lot of lore, like not main like movie lore about them, but there's like a lot of books and games and all this backstory to a lot of them. And a lot of them are such fan favorites. So to get a Bounty Hunter-esque game, open world, doing these missions, I think it's a good combination of a lot of elements of video games that people really enjoy. And the Bounty Hunter focus of it just makes sense. It makes perfect sense that it's this uh, kind of time for it. But there's some super interesting like Easter eggs in this trailer that was in this... Um, that kind of showed up that were really kind of shocking. Uh, and I'm sure we'll mention a few of them, but I didn't even realize that we got a freaking Kira appearance until after. And I saw a tweet about it that was like, oh, that person in the hood, that was Kira. Insane. So some cool Easter eggs in here. But uh, yeah, I'm, I am actually really looking forward to this game. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a great, it's a great premise. It's also, it's also great that the character, she's not like, KVS is not supposed to be like this hardened underworld thing. Like she's part of it is she's new at this. She's new to mm. the game. Like her her blaster is all shiny and new. Like she mm. the the ship that you use in the game is one that she quote permanently borrows. She steals it. It's not her ship. And she just she just takes off in it. And then you know there's other stuff that happens that just like she's she's not experienced. So I like that. Like while you're being thrust into this and you're new to this galaxy and being this open world amazing thing she's also going to be this you're kind of along with the ride with k um but i Catherine, i want to get your take on this are, are you are you a massive gamer do you play all the games or do, are do you play no games like me? i play no games not at all um but yeah i watched the trailer and oh my god how cute is that little sidekick animal I want a plushie oh, my God. Yeah. and a plushie yeah. with actually now, now, Disney, now. I want them. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we're, we're, they're, they're, well, look at all the money they're losing from, what is it, what's his name, Nix? Nix, yeah. The, no. the sidekick oh, character, need, yeah. Need plushie Nix. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really cool. And like you said, we've got, we've got some great cameos. Um, I think, see, I'm confused now because – the there is a character at the very beginning where they call out Crimson Dawn and then they say, mm. Oh, it lo looks like Kira, but then everyone's like, I don't know if that's Kira. And then they released a screenshot from Game Informer and they said, No, Kira is actually in the game, but apparently that's not her in the trailer, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, don't so I. yeah, but it's like it's another woman with with that looks kind of like Kira, but it's not Kira, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. Just put Kira in the trailer. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. And we're getting a lot of interesting planets. We got Akiva. Does anybody know the planet Akiva? That's a planet that showed up originally in the Aftermath books. It's the home planet of good old Snap Wexley. Oh. Um, it'll be actually a pl playable planet in this game along with I mean, obviously we see a crate dragon so that's tatooine um i'm maybe now hot i don't know there's a was a bunch they haven't completely confirmed everything but it looks like there's gonna be a bunch of planets and i i've i've had limited experience with jedi fallen order and and, and survivor um but it, you know this looks like a true like proper open world experience i think people have kind of been waiting for hmm. there's been a lot of controversy about there's apparently there's a season pass this is a single player game yes. but there's a season pass i don't know what's going on there i don't that's gaming speak uh for that <laughs> um and yeah. there's also supposed to be you, you have to be online all the time and people are pissed about that um a lot of stuff going on i don't i don't understand it all need, need star after to come in and explain it all for us Mm. There are. Um, the, is it is it the, open world? It is open world as I far think, as I yeah, know. That's yeah. why. That's that why. Yeah. It, I, the, the world itself probably a lot of it exists in a server, so they can change right. it easily and add to it. Right. Mm. And they got they've got a bunch of part of the season pass, which I I mean I guess is a plus to that is like there's a bunch of different costume 
changes and you can dress K up like Han Solo or, you know, a bunch of different things. I saw some very fun uh, little Easter eggs in there. It was really cool. Um, Hannah, you said there was connections. Mm. Uh, H- Hannah's connection corner. Did uh, Was there stuff in here <laughs> that you connection. noticed? Yeah, well, freaking, uh, we're going to Jabba's Palace and we're seeing Han and Carbonite, which was, that was, yeah, I found that pretty, um, like a stark Easter egg in the trailer. I was like, oh, we're right here. That's Han Solo and Carbonite right there. Um, but I think, I think that was smart in the trailer because I think this is probably a game that not a lot of people have you know we only got like the kind of rumors of it last year then we got that bit of a what was it what was it like a game concept trailer uh and then this so i don't think it's been uh, like as talked about as a game as say uh like jedi fallen order or survivor so i think kind of putting the surrounds of that kind of content in the trailer kind of shows people what it, where we are what we're doing oh, you're a bounty hunter, we're in this period of time, like Han and Carbonite is so iconic. So it kind of places the story for everyone in their heads. So I think that was really cool to see um, kind of whereabouts we are. But it's with this game, I who said it earlier, I was like, I kind of wish this was a show. I think Dom said this, like, because <laughs> yeah. it's really interesting, like Crimson Dawn, the whole like mall Kira running of everything there's like these old pikes in the trailer there's like a bunch of them i'm like are these affiliated maybe with the ones from book boba fett are these like you no know, who are these pikes like i think there's a lot of characters in the you know the underworld that we've seen throughout the time of star wars um and it would have made a great show but i think it's gonna i think that's why it's gonna make a cool game because i think there's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna understand and affiliate with once we once we see them in the game you know what i mean yeah it's mm. yeah, it's definitely yeah it, it's great to it's great to see this level uh like because that that is ultimately as someone who's not a big gamer who i'm, I'm mostly am in star wars for the tv shows and movies i too come at this and go like well, why couldn't i just watch this why couldn't this just be a tv show it looks so good but then I'm mm. like, no, I like I I appreciate the the amount of detail and stuff like that that goes into these games. That the fact that we can have a story that will be like, if they just if this was just a TV show, I'd watch it like like this, mm. like it, yeah, it looks like a video game. That's fine. Like you know, I, I think uh, the whole um, criticism of it looks like a video game cutscene that's becoming less and less of a of a criticism nowadays because video game cutscenes mm. look so good now. Um, but also just the level of storytelling and stuff like this and the connectivity is is excellent it's so good um so yeah it's great and i also I forgot to mention um we have a release date for this thing um august 30th is when this is coming out we actually didn't know yeah, that two days until... after my birthday yay, yay. Hey. So, which we didn't even know was going to come out this year so like it was like talk about maybe it's, is it is it next is it 2025 is it christmas 2024 no august august 30th it's... um so um, 141 days. So it's so interesting how much uh, that they're actually packing into this year. Like, just talking about that date. Mm. Like, that's only one month after Acolyte finishes. So we had, like, Bad Batch, then then finishes. Three days later, Tales of the Empire. Then only, like, three weeks off, and then Acolyte starts. And then we'll have only, like, three and a half weeks off of Acolyte. And then we have this game. We are getting stacked with content this year, which I did not expect. No, no, Star Wars is dead, didn't you hear? Star Wars is dead. No more Star Wars. No more Star Wars. It's, it's all gone dead. now. It's all gone. <sighs> but yeah, but, with yeah. the actors' strike, I think we all expected you know, things to be a little bit more sparse. But yeah, it feels like things are coming. And they've still got Skeleton Crew ready to go. So you're right. This year's looking mm. very stacked. Mm. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're game to get i mean we're game to get obviously acolyte and probably skeleton crew by the end of the year um hopefully um who knows what's going on with that because we haven't heard anything um but like ultimately like we're getting so much stuff like we're basically we're rolling from bad batch almost directly into acolyte which is crazy 
And you know, in other years, it's, this is not unprecedented. We had Pat Batch at the same time as Mandalorian season three, you know, the other year. So like, it's, you know, mm. it's not un- unprecedented just to have so much Star Wars, but it is, it is overwhelming. And, uh, you know, ultimately um, we're going to, it's, it's crazy when there is no Star Wars because we're so used to having so much Star Wars at so many times, kind of crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, so August 30th is when you can expect to think this is out on I think Xbox, PlayStation 4, PC, not a Nintendo Switch. I noted that fact. Um, but um, <laughs> is yeah. uh, is it uh, specifically is what generation of consoles is it? Did you do we know for sure? I did not, not make a note of that. No, um, I forget what it's called, but not the not the high class ones. <laughs> High okay. class. So a lot of people will have access to this. It's on. It's on. Nice. Yeah, it's on X. I I know at least for Xbox, and I think maybe I don't think PS4 though. I think it's like PS5 and above. I don't, do so, things come out on PS4 anymore? I don't know. According to so this, it curious. says PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Series S, and Microsoft Windows. Okay. Yeah. So. Good so it is definitely the the latest generation of, of uh, graphics and such that's only seems playable to be on yeah. the newest systems. Oh, it is. I have. Yes. I guess. So yes, that's what it sounds like. Well, yeah, because X and S are the two are the newest Xboxes, I believe. Right. I believe, yeah. yeah. I believe, yeah. and five is the newest PlayStation, and PC is PC. PC is PC. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, anything else from the trailer? I mean, I, obviously there's, it's, it's a really jam packed trailer. Like it's, it's, it is, there's so many beautiful like vistas and, you know, there's a lot of, even though it's a story trailer, kind of interesting as the story, we see a lot of see good bit of gameplay and just like kind of how the characters work and stuff like that. It's really cool. Just kind of getting a, a, a feel of the environment, which I think I, I really appreciated. But anybody else have anything they want to bring up about the trailer? Oh, I think it just looks so crisp. Ready to go. Crisp I mean, is a good word for it. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for more VR stuff. Now that's the only thing we need. We have everything else. VR. Yeah. It is weird. VR was just like everywhere there. Like we had like they were playing what ba- wasn't Battlefront in VR for once or something like that. They had like a VR experience. And uh now there's less VR. I, I thought VR was the future, man. We guess it made too many people dizzy. <laughs> It does that. Look, I've seen those videos of people just like falling over and and j- jumping <laughs> into walls and stuff like that. It, VR is dangerous, y'all. Of course, have you seen have you seen the the tiles they come up with? Disney invented these tiles. Mm, yes, that I like have. you walk on them and you just walk in place. It's wild. Yeah, that'll mm. be fun to do something Star Wars yeah. with that in like five years, whatever they're planning, <laughs> or the Imagineers are cooking. Oh boy. Yep. 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 All right, well, uh, moving on to something that we're talking about. Oh, why couldn't this be a movie or TV show? Well, they're turning a TV show into a movie. It's called The Mandalorian Grogu, and we got official confirmation that it will be coming out, at least as of this moment, May 22nd, 2026. That is officially Mm. official, not rumors, whatever. That's Ah. according to the official disney schedule now those have never changed before have they yes they have so (laughs) you know we'll we'll see how this goes i'm very i'm just i'm at this point i'm just like yeah 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 whatever we'll we'll when it's i I just i want a production still i want that black and white felonies hat on top of grogu or something like a behind the scenes still (laughs) Yeah. Of like, you know, the filming has started and then we can like, okay, okay, it's actually coming out. Realistically, they're filming now and they can actually come out at the allotted time. Um, but yeah, and they also apparently Toy Story 5 also in 2026. Speaking of sequel, nobody asked for. Oh boy. Wait, that's real now? I thought that was that's uh, real. That was like a rumor. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's real. It's really that will be live action, right? Based on the the traje- trajectory. Oh yeah, of course. It, it, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're they're actually, actually, actually going to get the... except for the characters was live action practically. Except yeah, the they're toys. just going to get. Um, it's just going to be uh, uh, you know, Tom Hanks and Tim Allen actually in in suits. <laughs> 
yeah um, on set that's, that's, so that's the real thing now yeah i think so yeah, yeah. but yeah the, the, this re release date is an interesting one like it sounds good it sounds right like oh yeah that kind of makes sense um it i think the further away it is is actually a, a better thing because i think that means they're not going hey we want this out you know in december christmas time we want a star wars movie out now and it's this rushed thing that hopefully means a production start soon this year uh hopefully like six months filming and then maybe another you know nine to 12 months uh post-production uh really putting time and effort into it um which would you know to, to make a cohesive and important story uh but with all this like with, with like that release date it makes me just question literally everything else that's happening I'm like okay so where's the ray movie is this ray movies before because that hasn't started production would that be next year next may what's like trying to place where the other projects are is interesting are we getting confirmation of a season four for mando where's everything else going to fit around this so yeah it's it, it's interesting but but i think good and solid solid uh goal i think yeah co like this is something that came out today i don't know actually where this is this is a, from empire who says that this is daisy ridley i don't know i i'm I, I am assuming this has something to do with you i'm just reading it's cold i know the story beats but other than that i'm not sure what's going on to be but i'm reading a script next month i'm curious about it all daisy ridley is going to be officially yeah. reading the script to her movie next month so assuming they are at least close to a draft which means production will be starting at some point in the near future like there, there's the wheels are moving on that so like it seems like that is probably definitely going to be probably definitely going to be the next movie after a man mm. 2027 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah 28 um december like, december 27 probably Oh yeah, that's true too. Because I think I think that's the whole like idea behind going back to the solo thing of we're gonna we're gonna do one in May and one in December and yeah. hopefully it works out this time. This um, time the December but, movie will um, bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's just for chaos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta love it, gotta love it. But um, yeah. So we got we got a release date. We got a, we got a release date. At least at least as of right now, until they just swap it out with something else or change it, delay it, or whatever else. I think what makes me the most confident is that they have the infrastructure for this. It's not like oh they have to cast it, they have to do all this. They have to like they they've done three seasons of this, four or five counting like what they've done mm. with Book of Boba and Soka. So like th this production crew knows what they're doing. They can do this. Um, so it's just a matter of just like get the script and get everyone scheduled line and doing it. Like I think they can they can hammer this out pretty easily. Hmm. So yeah, yeah. And still yeah. no date on Andor season two coming out. Still no date Shocking. on Andor season two. Shocking! Just ridiculous! The ridiculous! <laughs> Where the hell is it? Oh my! Kill Rory! So one okay. hour seventeen for anyone taking bets. That's that's how long it took me to mention Andor. Oh wow, that, <laughs> that is, was uh, impressive. That is impressive. Very impressive. I look, commend look, you. Look, it's <laughs> good. It's good that you said it because I was about to mention it myself for on your behalf because I was about to say use this little segue to say this is right up your alley. This next story is right up your alley, Catherine, <laughs> because we got news. That Bo Willeman, who is famously wrote three of probably the best damn episodes of Star Wars or any TV show ever, um, particularly the third episode, I think the entire Narkina 5 yeah. prison break arc yeah. of Andor, particularly One Way Out, he is reportedly going to be joining James Mangold on the quote dawn of the jedi movie co-writing that movie so now we have the the big news here is that like the guy who wrote some of the most powerful star wars ever is now working on james mangold that that like i was already excited like i'm a big james mangold fan i loved indy 5 like i i'm i'm all in on mangold but this this ups the ante 
Um, so I, Catherine, take this away, please. So yeah, the man who wrote, I made my mind a sunless place. <laughs> like the everything monologue and the one way out, like all of that. Like how pumped were we with just the line, never more than 12? The man who wrote that, the person who wrote that is now reportedly writing or co-writing, yeah, the Mangold early Jedi's movie. So excited. So I was really interested in this movie anyway, but now it's really got me sitting up and going, wow, that could be something. That could be amazing. Yeah. Now I'm yeah. just running through the, the monologue. <laughs> oh man i love it it's so it is, good it one way out is amazing because you're just like you think you think about oh all the amazing andor moments and you go through like five or six of them like these are my favorite moments for andor it's like oh they all happen in one episode like oh i love that great speech that Keanu lloyd oh that's in that episode oh well, i love that speech from from luthan oh that's five minutes later in that episode like it's just it's just how do you pack that much into the one episode? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's so well written and I've seen a lot of breakdowns of that because, yeah, of course, you know, YouTube is just suggesting stuff like that to me. Absolutely. But just how well it's written and obviously Stellan Skarsgård just delivers. But that whole arc just the building, the slow building of the tension and how just everything is just so amazing with it. And I remember at the end of the second episode with Kino saying never more than 12, I was running around this house screaming. <laughs> I was just so pumped. And I think the internet sort of exploded with everyone just screaming never more than 12. Like it was, oh, such a moment. And yeah, if he's bringing that energy, oh, you'll have to tie me down in the cinema. I'll just be, <laughs> no way. No, uh, just be, the, be doing laps up and down the yep. aisles around it. Yeah, the, yeah. the seats now come with seat belts in the cinema. Because <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god! Buckle up. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I would pay extra money to see this movie with Catherine. Okay, just for the record, I would, I would one hundred percent. Well, um, that like, that is a uh, called uh, Southwest.com then, and it is a lot of money. <laughs> Look, I'm already, I'm already mad that we don't get like Catherine's reactions. I feel like you would have the number one and or reaction channel if you recorded your reactions. It would just be, I think maybe it'd be too much. I think it would kill everybody because it would just be too much. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like, um, <laughs> so on Star Wars Spelt Out, Josh did the one for uh, the trailers with me, and you know, I cried. Like, I cried, and it's just too much. I mean, he does the internet the service of at the past two celebrations when I've been meters away from Diego on the on the stage. He's he's filmed that. Um, so that's, oh, that's all iconic. That that video is iconic. If you haven't seen that, we we have to reshare that after this because that's so good. <laughs> you're just losing, you know, like in the best way. You're losing your mind, like live in the at celebration, just losing your mind. It's so good. It's so good. Oh. What was the thing with the Anaheim one? Was that the night before? I'd been. Oh yeah, he's in Khan. Like he's. He's not going to come to celebration. And then he shared to Twitter a sign from celebration. So there I am in um, the Disney, one of the Disney hotels in the bar, just losing my mind with my friends. And then, yeah, the next day we went in and, and we were hanging on, hanging on and... So the story is we were sort of up close. We, we kind of thought he was coming, maybe not, watching the celebration stage, and then we saw on the teleprompter he's been a fan since he was six years old. And we're like, oh, my God, it's happening. <laughs> it's, happening. Oh, it's on. Oh, that's chills, man. And then, you know, Ali comes out and starts and then goes, then stops and goes, oh, no, and then introduces someone else. 
and then someone else. Oh. And, and you know, we, we had passes to get into the Kenobi premiere, no. but we're like, no, nah. no. Nah. You know, you can't miss this. And then it happened. <laughs> oh, my God. What a day. What a time. It was right there. It was right there. <laughs> I'm going to get this video up. It's so good. I've got to find it now. It's it's amazing. And um yeah. So look, we got we 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 got I I'm glad you I'm glad we did this, okay? I'm glad we did this. We got we got Catherine pure and or joy <laughs> live on camera. It's just a beautiful thing. It's just a beautiful thing. <laughs> It's so infectious. I and I love I love the fact that like because I do countdowns for Star Wars movies when and, and stuff when I do have a date. You're just like <laughs> one day closer to Andor every day. I'm just like hell yeah, day, one like, day closer. We are exactly. We don't know when. Well, one day closer. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. We can then anyway. Yeah. Oh, so so I started the one day closer one day during the 2020 one of Melbourne's many many lockdowns. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, I've gotten through the day. I'm one day closer to Andor. And every day since, one day closer. Never missed a mm. day. Never missed a day. Most mm. impressive. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, um, I think maybe we could be here all night talking about this because this is a lot of fun. But we do have some loyal and uh, awesome people that are waiting for their questions to be answered. So I think maybe maybe it's time for a little edition of Ask the SWU. Um, we should have a jingle for it. Where How do we are, not have a jingle for this segment? It is weird we don't Ask have a jingle. Ask the SWU. Hey. Ask the SWU. Questions with the yeah. SWU. Yay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they could send in send in your your um your your jingles for us. Um, to uh, we'll do something with that. We'll do something. With that. We'll work on that. We're, we're, we're your jingle? What the hell does that mean? Oh, People so can send things on the internet, Hannah. They can send. They can make things and send them in. Uh, Damn we're it! Asking them to write a song for us and send it in. Because I don't have time to do it. Why can't they do it? Anyway, anyway. what do they got for us this week? Anyway, um, first up, we got Mister. Joel Davis. Oh my God. Joel said a super chat. This is amazing. Okay. Never mind. This he does this every week. Um, do, do you, he says, uh, f uh, thank you so much for Joel. Seriously. Cause you're, you're always loyal and you, you, you're sometimes the only person sending super chats. Um, do you think, do you think we will ever see what Palpatine was looking at in the episode three in episode three before the series ends? So he's talking about mm. specifically, the the thing that Palpatine like in the dark room where there's like clearly something shrouded in darkness. Palpatine goes in. And he's like, "Yes, this is everything is going according to my plans." Um, and you know, like in that dark room, like I I say yes because they freaking teased it. So that would be freaking every, mad if they didn't. Every time that they've shown the vault, my brain forgets what the vault is, and it thinks it's that. <laughs> so this happened again this week where, you know, uh, <laughs> Hemlock was like, to Omega, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. And then I'm like, oh, he's going to see the Palpatine thing. And now it's just it's just the kids again. I'm like, gosh. Yeah, well, what's – do we have two different names for those rooms? Because, I yeah, I get the same confusion every week. I'm like, what – is that Vault A and Vault <laughs> B? Or is open it like, door. like, oh, we're going to get the dark room. No, we're get the light room. Okay. The, the basement I, to the basement. Like, I don't, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, I what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are both photography uh, terms. Dark rooms are how we used to make photographs, and light <laughs> rooms are how we now make photographs. That's yeah. odd. Anyway, <laughs> it is. It is interesting. Um, but um, look, I and Joel Aaron was on Twitter. He was like, "Oh, there's something up above that's that's clearly being obscured." And I was watching, thinking, "Like, what is that?" Look, look. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this prediction. This is not a hot tag. This is not some, uh, you know this is not something smart. Okay. This is the writings on the wall for this. It's gotta be Zilla beast. Okay. They freaking teed up the Zilla beast last season. And that's something, there's something big in that room. It's gotta be mm -hmm. clone Zilla beast. Right. Right. Does everyone agree? Surely. Yes, everyone's agree. Surely. I, I agree. I think we've got the yeah. ability here for that to be Zilla. Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. All right. So up next, we've got uh, via Discord. Uh, Ingenious says, uh, okay, so there's a, there's three episodes left of the Bad Batch. With all of the theories out there about the identity of CX clones, what if we never find out who he is? Not even if he is someone we know or just a regular clone or not, but that is just never gets revealed. How would you all feel about that? She's um, not, not again. Great. Again, I would not be pissed. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I th this has come across my mind just recently of like, Hmm. What if we never know? But I just feel like there's too much focus on the on the character. There's too many lingering shots and moments of, you know, indecision from the character. Like I feel like it's it's too loaded for it to end up being nothing. Um his, but his it has hatred uh, toward it, but, yeah. seems really personal. Yes. Right. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. That's true. That is true. So you could have been one of us. Yeah, that, that that feels weird if that just was kind of evaporated into oh it's it's just another clone or like it's no one that we knew, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I'm, yeah, I'll I'll go back to my opinions. It's like they're telegraphing a lot of stuff, and they're like, you know, there's every other clone. It's been like he shows up and then they take the mask off. They capture him and they take the mask off and they show who it is. And it's a nobody clone. There's nobody we know. But then they keep coming back to this guy. Um, so they're trying to tell. And then also, you know, I, I like I said, I don't want to be on the tech is alive train, but I am because they keep freaking telegraphing it so hard. Um, so, you know, I can't help but believe that. But we shall see. I think I keep thinking I thought last episode we were going to get in this episode and we didn't get anything. So I uh, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, maybe next episode. We got three episodes left. Three episodes left. Crazy. Crazy. Um, so um, next up, we've got our good buddy, Matthew, who says, why do we only ask about the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallows? Why not the air airspeed velocity of swallows laden with the weight of existence as a millennial or Gen Z in a boomer world? Far more relevant, I'd say. Thoughts, anyone? Poor old Gen X Is gets it? left out of everything. <laughs> I <laughs> my brain, my brain hurts. Yeah, I can't. I, I... Is this about a bird? I can't understand what's going on. I think it's a deep I... pop culture reference that no one is getting. It's yeah. a, from the Monty Python, the search there for the Holy go. Grail. Yes. Oh, there we go. You're kidding. <laughs> That's hilarious. Dang. Uh, it's this so, is so, it. And, the, the, answer, the answer guys? the answer well no the answer is that the question itself is rhetorical so there is no answer. What is the meaning of life? That's the yeah. That's that is the question. I mean, oh I, I'm gosh. talking to Chat GPT about that now. I'll inform <laughs> you later of what it said. <laughs> yeah, f please fill us in. Would love to hear the thoughts of Chat GPT. Uh, well, I had it read ten books about the meaning of life and summarize them. So it's really the those books telling you the answer. But yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there <Anyway>. you go. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Moving I feel on. Like I'm a cashier. Um, Next. <laughs> <laughs> next. Um, uh, next up is again our good buddy Joel Davis, who sends us another great super chat. Thank you so much, Joel. And he says, "Do you think they'll repeat a lot of the information we already know about Project Necromancer when Din and Grogu get involved in the Mando film?" So we talking we're talking Mandalorian and Grogu necromancer stuff. I Chris, think go, I, I think the feeling that I get about this movie just from the title is that this movie actually might be a re-entry point into Star Wars for people because we haven't had one of those in a while. So I actually think that this movie is not going to require a lot of knowledge about Star Wars to understand. I think it's going to be a pretty simple self-contained story. Um, and it's going to have characters that we know from other things. 
Um, but I, I don't think it's going to get into a lot of heavy stuff. I think it's just going to be something that people can watch and be like, oh, this is Star Wars, and then use that to then jump into the, the series on Disney Plus and other things. Yeah, I mm. I feel like in a way, once we get done with Bad Batch, we will be kind of done with all the necromancer stuff. Like, like that'll be kind of, we're kind of closing the book on that not to say that it won't come into play later. I just don't think it'll be like a major plot point that like it'll need to be explained to the audience. Be like, oh, this is nudge, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Palpatine's coming back in a few years. And we got to explain this. I think more or less, you know, we had all the cloning. We had Moff Gideon, all that kind of stuff. I think whatever it is, I think the focus will be Thrawn. And Thrawn, at least based on what I know and what I'm assuming is going to be in this, in this movie is he's not going to be necessarily connected to Palpatine. Thrawn is not working towards Palpatine's end game. That's a separate thing. So I don't think really Necromancer is going to think, I think it'll be a, a thing in the background that they'll reference. I think it'll be like that scene that we get in season three of just like, Oh, it's Hux and working with Necromancer or whatever else. It'll be that, but I don't think it'll be something that will necessarily be it'll just be like name drop and then that's it and then we're moving on and then oh yay you know din and grogu off on another adventure and you know i think also yeah i agree with chris another entry point i think this will be kind of i think there's a reason we had a very bow tie ending to season three is that they're kind of starting over going back to basics and it'll be kind of a restart mm. for those characters and a restart for star wars and in general in this kind of this era Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like definitely the content and like the concepts of the Project Nec Necromancer is so deeply tied to the sequels that I feel like that's where should be the next like content focus jump. And, uh, you know, I think this is going to be after Mando Gruger movie, after Andor 2, after Ray movie even. Well, the Ray movie will be kind of the probably the point in which we get, you know, maybe that's where we get the TV show after that will be a sequels era TV show. Um, and I think that's really when they'll kind of tie in maybe more of this uh, story of, you know, really of Snoke, maybe some Exegol stuff and, and, and things like that. So, yeah, I, I don't see it being a prevalent point after Bad Batch Season 3, really, uh, until we get into the grit of it when it is the sequel's time. Right. I think it'll be made clear that the Bad Batch like set it back a few years by the end of the season. Just like, you know, Palpatine was maybe on the cusp of doing something and then uh, the Bad Batch screwed up Sheev's plans and then he'll have to wait another 30 years to, you know, do that. I mean, he's not even dead yet. Like Palpatine is still alive in the Bad Batch. He doesn't have to worry about coming back to life. He's not returned yet. Somehow he's not returned just yet. So, um, yeah, that's all. It's all in the future um so uh, let's go back to the discord um and let's go to vlad sanders comment he says uh quote i believe that no matter how how i believe that no matter how random things may appear there's still a plan attributed to hannibal smith from the a team um and he says uh, sorry the tank jump in the latest bad batch episode gave me hardcore a team vibes and cause the theme song at start playing in my head. So Rampart question mark. I'll I'll bet Rampart hasn't changed, obviously, by the by the co-workers, by the way he was treating his non-human co-workers. Do you think he's going to try to betray the batch at some point? Uh three episodes left. I'm wondering if Fee will end up taking Omega and other quote tesk subjects away from the Tantus while the batch wrecks and however many clones they assemble assault the complex. Your thoughts. Um, so yeah, um, a few questions in there. <laughs> Anyone you want to take any of those, including the, the A-team reference? I'm, I'm probably the, whole thing again, so I don't the only one of it. <laughs> old enough <laughs> to remember the A-team. <laughs> I know what it is. I have not seen it. Look, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put a, perhaps even more obscure reference on the table something that, that my my Good. my mind went to uh anybody heard of the Duke, dukes of hazard yep i've heard oh, of it oh yeah yeah yes. 
that was um definitely um definitely that that when it when the when the thing turned into a ramp like they could should have just gone to commercial break because like dukes of hazard is is a very famous show for like the car goes off a ramp and it's in midair it's just like well them duke boys are the what's gonna happen to them now and then it goes to commercial break and leaves you on a cliffhanger and like it should have been that it's just somebody's got to like edit that yeah. um, um with bad batch so yeah that would be amazing so so having read it again to process the complexity of the question because it's a really good question um right. i would say ugh, the thing that's so interesting about like the future of like the clones and the test subjects from from tantus is you wonder about like is the star wars unit first big enough for them to continue existing and have an impact in because you always run into these issues where it's like well, why isn't this group helping over here in this situation? Because there's so many situations where everybody comes together in Star Wars and fights the big thing. And yet we find out that it's not everybody constantly whenever more mm -hmm. characters are introduced, especially force sensitive characters or characters that know like deep truths about what's going on. Um, so I, I wonder, like, you know, can we have even more? for sensitive characters like growing up and stuff during the original trilogy era, which would happen if, if, if all of these children survived. Um, so from a storytelling point of view with it being still being in the purge era, I think it's true to the overall um, chronology and structure of star Wars for a lot of these characters to die. Um, however, at the same time, I do often wonder as of late, if they are starting to restructure some of the the overarching plot points of Star Wars. Like, for instance, like there's that overarching plot point that almost every single Jedi has been killed by the Purge. And when we get to the original trilogy, it's really supposed to be Obi-Wan and Yoda that are the only ones left. Mm -hmm. Yet, right. as time progresses, we're learning that more and more have have survived through through the purge, as we've told stories with different ones. And so, I wonder, you know, if we're gonna get to the point where the weight of all of that kind of unbalances it, and we just have to assign retcon different meanings to some of the things said, like, no, there is another referring to Leia. No, there's a hundred others actually uh, like you know um <laughs> i wonder about these things i wonder about these things yeah i i think there is a concerted effort on the storyteller's point of view like just general star wars storytellers like not just any specific ones like i think the path introduced in kenobi and then obviously we have the 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 I, I can't. Remember. I think it's something a little bit cold, a little bit different, but basically the same thing in in, in Jedi Survivor, of uh, another like this kind of underground railroad for for Force users and people that are just trying to escape the Empire and having them kind of like you disappear. And we, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of characters out there in the winds. We've had characters that we presumed were dead that are not anymore. Like Quinlan Voss is someone that was just like, yeah, maybe he died in Ren Zith. And like, no, he's still out there. He's someone who is in the wind, um, helping the path, doing stuff. And you have this organized, what really becomes the rebellion. I'm curious how that thing's like, I think there's heavy vibes with the path and Obi-Wan Kenobi are just like, yeah, this is the rebellion. This is just the proto rebellion this is roken's gonna be general roken and he's gonna be part of the rebellion someday um but there is that facet of like hiding people and helping people that that are not this is a time that they're not going to go up in arms and fight it's about trying to live under the empire and just trying to survive and so that whole thing is gonna be interesting and you have like all these kids and stuff like this that are out there that you know, unless this show gets real dark real fast, nothing's gonna bad's gonna happen to them. They're gonna be saved somehow and taken back. But like, how do they exist? And you know, I'd also like to see, I'd like to see either the the post Return of the Jedi Jedi do this, like Luke Skywalker, or even further in the future, Ray address some of this stuff. It'd be like, okay, how do you deal with a post Imperial reign? How do you how do you find all these people that have just kind of in the wind that are trying to hide? Um, 
because that could be just a lot of interesting storytelling on the back end of that, I think. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Well, was there any other, what, what was, uh, he had a lot of, a lot to this, to his question. I want to make sure we got everything. Um, the three episodes left. I wonder if, if fee will end up taking, okay. We kind of, that was what I was talking kind of, about. That part, kind of yeah. talked about that. Um, but Rampart hasn't changed. I mean, look, I, I think it's pretty much expected that Rampart will betray the batch in some capacity. But I I do genuinely think I think his I think his hate for Palpatine might outweigh his hate for the batch at this moment. I think he might actually want to help. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah like I, his, I his, feel his, like a Hux a Hux situation yes, happened. Yes. Right, right. There's a lot of Star Wars characters that fit this mold of, you know, they've been betrayed by um the empire but they're not necessarily good characters and they become people who are out the, for themselves and you know one moment they can be an ally one moment they can be an enemy it just depends the fact that like he's like oh well i, I think we need to bargain i think you need to get me off this planet before i talk tell you anything the fact that in that moment like oh sure rampart sure you know he's gonna we're going to get out of the atmosphere and he's going to be like, well, not, actually I'm not going to tell you anything. Like I expected that routine. The fact that he was like, okay, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll work with you. It's like this guy, he's a slime ball. He's got a little bit of honor, a little bit of trustworthiness in him that, that maybe could be useful. So very mm. curious again, next episode now, please. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, and also, <laughs> That's not all. That's not all of, of Vlad's question. Okay, there's one more bit of this, and I saved it for this because um, uh, I haven't been keeping up with the Discord as much. I'm sorry, Vlad. I'm sorry. Is this okay? the joke? Or no, no, the this trivia. This is the trivia, trivia question. This is the trivia oh, question man. that oh, he's man. prepared for us, and I feel bad that I haven't done my proper study, but he says, uh, finally, I will drop the answer to the second Star Wars trivia question sometime during today's episode of the SBU. so he dropped it sometime in the last hour or two <laughs> so I love this. um so apparently and see i haven't looked at anything so i i genuinely i read it i have no idea he sent another book excerpt i don't know what it is what what was the question again project it was it was uh it was it was uh trying to identify the book from which a one of his newest excerpts was posted Oh, the zombies. Man. Where did zombies show up in a Star Wars Legends book? Oh, th this is definitely Death Troopers. I mean, yeah, that's the that's yeah, that's 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 definitely Death that's Troopers. That's logical, actually. But there's yeah. there's another one that's talking about um, Project Starscream and Darth Vader and and uh, there's a gonk droid in there and all this kind of stuff. Starscream isn't that yeah. something from the um. It sounds like something from Transformers. <laughs> that is, that is a Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Starscream. There we go. I didn't know. I didn't expect a Transformers Star Wars crossover, but here we are. <laughs> um. Okay. So answer here. Apparently, this is from Star Wars: Galaxy of Fear, City of the Dead, published February first, nineteen ninety seven. How have I? How have I not heard of that? I'm I'm I've thinking the same that. thing. Wow, I thought I, I at least have heard. The I didn't know there was. Ever. I didn't know they were making undead Star Wars novels back in the '90s. Yeah, Death Troopers was the first one that I heard about. Mm. And that was in like, like that was a big deal. That was a big Death Troopers was like, oh my god, Star Wars has has zombies now. This is wild. Um, so yeah, that's your. It's in a, thank you, Vlad, for the recommendation. I'll have to check this out. It's by City of the Dead by John Whitman. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Um, got a couple more questions. We're going to run through them real quick. Um, uh, Dr. Hugh. Always love to hear from Hugh. Um, he says, on Sunday, the 7th of April, I attending a rescreening of GoldenEye at my local cinema. My question related to this is what connections can you make between James Bond and Star Wars? One example is Boba Fett actor Jeremy Bullock, who played played Q's assistant Smithers in For Your Eyes Only and Octopussy. Location-wise, Guatemala was used for the Yavin 4 sequences in, the, in A New Hope, but it was also used for some exterior scenes in Moonraker, parentheses, or as some sometimes call it, the British Star Wars. Um, 
So yeah, um, James I'm James sure, Star Wars connections. I'm pretty sure Sean Connery played Han Solo's dad. <laughs> <laughs> when? <laughs> yes. <laughs> ben, <laughs> check, check, check behind your head, Ben. Something flew over it, apparently. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nicely. Did they okay. use a lot of the same studios, or I'm sure a lot of the same crews would have done both at some point? Um, oh yes, Bu yeah. the bull run in the comments talks about Daniel Craig being a stormtrooper in the Force Awakens. That is that is a good one. I also forgot about that. Also, there's one there's one Bond movie. It's with what's his name. It begins, it's it's on a roof, and there's a dude in a wheelchair with a cat, and you only see the back oh. of his head. And yeah. then Bond pilots a helicopter, picks him up, and drops him into a funnel. That guy is played by John Hollis, who also played Lobot. Oh. Oh. Yes, I can wow. see that. Was that, wow. uh, was that Goldfinger? Oh, could be, that? could be. I don't know if I've actually seen that one. I think I've seen that one. That one yeah, I probably watched like twenty years ago. Yeah, good old John Hollis. Yeah, you only see the back of his head. Weirdly, he only he doesn't talk. <laughs> you only see the you know. Um, but yeah, that's the that's that's yeah. And then uh, obviously Daniel Craig is a, is a, is an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like there's a ton of them, and I'm not thinking of them now that we're actually having this. There's discussion. a lot of James Bond films, and now there's a lot of Star Wars films. So I'm sure there's a lot of. Well, Christopher <laughs> Lee was um, mm -hmm. a bad guy in a James the Bond movie. The man with the golden gun. Yes, forgot that's about true. that. That's fair. That's fair. That's a good yeah. one. Great. That's a great one. So that's probably the that's probably the biggest one is is Christopher Lee <laughs> I also playing a feel villain like, in Star Wars and James Bond. I also feel like um, James Bond was canonically in Star Wars on on Canto Bite. Yeah, basically, what the Master Codebreaker was James Bond. Yeah, yeah, that's basically. I'm pretty sure that was James Bond. That's the yeah. vibes I got from that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I, um, I just yeah. want a. Billie Eilish to write a song for Star Wars. That's what I want. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, that's, oh, that's when. When that's, are we going to different. get that though? When are we going to get you know best original song at the Oscars for a Star that's right. Wars? Right. We movie? you need Billie Eilish or Adele to, to write for Star Wars if you if you're gonna go for that. See, Yub Nub was robbed. They should have won <laughs> best song. <laughs> robbed. I I Yub don't Nub. yeah. Yeah, I want to know in 1983, like, what was the best The thing song is, <laughs> is you can very easily, like, we know there's, we know there's rock music. There's popular music yeah, in Star Wars. Like, rock. this is not a foreign concept. So, like, just get, just get, just get Taylor Swift, okay? She's just, she's, she, you know, she doesn't have to say she's Taylor Swift, but just have her write a song. And have it be in Star Wars. And most of that time, if it's an original song, it just plays during the credits anyway. <laughs> it doesn't actually end the movie. So, you know, it, it, come on, do it. Thank, thank you, Up Where We Belong, from an officer and a gentleman for stealing that from Yum Nup. Uh, <laughs> uh. I've, I've ne never heard of any of that stuff, but <laughs> thank you, Google. <laughs> wow. It's the Rob. new Annie Hall. It's the new Annie Hall. Yup, no. Nope. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go I, there. I just, I just want. I'm just imagining Billy Eilish's take on Yub Nub right now, and it actually works really well because, like, the staccato style that she has, like in Bad Guy, really works for the, the Yub Nub. It's just imagine instead of, you know, Bad Guy, it's Yub Nub. There's gotta be a there's gotta be you're, a you're a yum Yeah. Oh, I think there's there's, a, there's probably there's probably an a, a chat GPT could probably do something with this. I'm like, the, you know, I think yub nub and the style of I'm the yeah, I can't yeah. even know the lyrics. I'm the yeah. yub nub. That's great. That could be it. <laughs> now that is scary. Imagine doing the Ewok hunt in Battlefront and the, you're hearing that. That is this sort of nightmare. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh wow. No thank you. No thank you. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs>
Um, okay, one one last one last question. One last question before we can close it out for the night. We got uh, a Giltzer ten on Discord who says, mm. "Are we ever going to figure out what happened to the rest of Delta Squad? Assuming Sev is still missing missing in action on Kashik, wonder what's going on with Boss and Fixer." So, yeah, it's it's weird. We, I mean, Delta Squad is canon. We we know that from the Clone Wars. And then they've just kind of made weird appearances, one or two of them here and there. And then like, uh, what's the one in Bad Batch? I get them confused. Okay, they all look the same to me. Uh, the like smooch and is it rip Sev in scorch? Is it Sev in scorch? Scorch, scorch, scorch right? A smooch, scorch, and scorch. Sev or scorch, scorch yeah. is actually in Bad Batch. And yeah, the, the, I don't know the other one. one called? Skipper or something. Sev. 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 <laughs> Scorch. Like Fixer. Boss, fixer. Yeah. Fixer yes. and boss. Yes. You got him. Yes. You got him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, they're gonna give us a trailer for something uh place your bets now but um in the meantime uh i'm just gonna sit back and enjoy it all and uh see what happens next Heck yes, you can follow Ben on social media at Ben Hart with no E. Hannah, thank you so much for hosting too. Thank you so much. Another great show. Love the banter and love to have you on again, Catherine. I just rewatched the Andor, like the the video of you at uh, Celebration. <laughs> it's so good. It gets me riled up. I'm like, yes, come on, Star Wars fans, unite! Ah, <laughs> I love it so much. But uh, yeah, another great week of uh, discussion. Can't wait for the next. Heck yeah, you can follow Hannah on social media at the Ray side, R-A-E side, and make sure you check out all of her great content on YouTube. And Catherine, thank you for guesting this week. Uh, let us know where people can check out your stuff. Well, my intermittent podcast, I'll put it that way, uh, That Geek Pod, you can find on all the podcatchers, Twitter, threads, um, Instagram, and I'm at Catherine underscore Neen on most places. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got the underscore. Amazing. Uh, I want to <laughs> know who the <laughs> Catherine Neen without the underscore is. I have to give a shout out to, to, to that geek pod. Okay. I, I, I listen. I listen. It's a great show. I do, I do have to take issue with your selection of guests. Okay. I think oh. you're being a little choose you're, you're not being choosy enough okay you let people like dom on there like i i'm not i'm not i think it's it's a it's a little you just, just start your vetting process needs a little bit better Catherine. i think do better I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh my god always welcome you're always welcome now you're gonna have to buy that plane ticket then that's the only way <laughs> open the studio and be like i'm here let's record <laughs> Only way, only way. So check her out at Catherine with a C, Neen with a K, K N E E N for those that are listening. And there's an underscore Jackpot. between those two things. That's where you'll find the the real Catherine Neen and not the fake one. Uh, so <laughs> check check the all of that out. The, the clone, the CX clone of Catherine. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Hemlock has done things to that one's brain, so I would stay away from that. Yeah, don't go to that, that one. <laughs> um, you can follow me at Seek3PO or uh, by searching my name, Chris Seekle, on that on like, Instagram and, and Facebook and stuff. Um, and uh, we want to remind everybody uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your way out if you're watching on YouTube and uh, check out our, our membership stuff we have over there and make sure that you subscribe to us on the podcast feed that you found us on if you just found us if not uh, consider leaving a review and if you've already done that check out our discord it never ends there's always another layer to, to the onion um, and we've got some awesome stuff going on over there um, I was trying not to make a joke, but it just came out as a joke. This one won't make um, you cry, okay? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Our Discord will not make you cry. I, I was cutting layers. some shallots. No, no I gotta tears. tell you, shallots are way worse than onions. I I forgive you for anything <laughs> I've ever said about onions after that experience. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, <laughs> so you can follow us on Discord for, yeah, all that, all that stuff, all that random musings and things beyond, beyond Star Wars. Uh, and make sure you check out all the other stuff on the Star Wars Up the World Network, uh, Tractor Beam, Beyond the Galaxy, Iron Cannon, The Race Side, and more. So that's it. We'll be back uh, next week. Uh, but until then, for Dom and Ben and Hannah and Catherine, my name is Chris, and may the Force be with you. We never wave enough on this show. That was a good wave. <laughs> I like that we I like that Catherine you joined in the wave too. That was good. Yeah. I like that. Oh my gosh. That's good. It's uh 